I want you to watch Grant Williams on this play. If you're making this rotation to a player at the rim, you've got to stay disciplined and not fall for the pump fake. And once they do go up, go straight up with them. Jared Allen's going to make this tag to Williams and close back out to Horford. But where he messed up is not getting back in the play. All because he missed a shot. The stop is not finished. It's important that you box out. And had Allen stay in the play, he could have prevented those second chance points. If the NBA is going to start calling carries again, they better call every single one. Because ain't no way Darius Garland carried three to four times in one possession and they ain't call a single one. If you're in the mismatch down low, your best bet is just to be active and front the post. Just give him a hard time. You see Allen get away with that little nudge right there, but White comes back and pulls the chair, which ends up getting Allen called for the travel. If you want to avoid getting dunked on, you can't meet someone at the top like Cornet does here. You have to beat him to the top, like White does on this next play. Notice how he gets in the air and prevents Mitchell from rising over the top of him, and he stays vertical. Late in games, it's probably best that you stick with the game plan. Throughout the whole night, the Celtics were switching every guard and wing screen, but on this big play down the stretch, Smart did it. If a player tries to spin on you in the post, you can stop them by getting your leg in between theirs, like LeBron does to Zion on this play, which will cause them to stand up and not cover any ground. Just this couple feet of room that Alvarado leaves on this baseline is what allows Westbrook to throw this pass right behind his back. So when you're guarding these baseline out of bounds plays, make sure that your heels are on the baseline. What Westbrook can do to lower his amount of turnovers is by starting to throw his passes with a little more air on it and by leading his teammates with the pass to only places where they could reach. Oftentimes, he puts a lot of heat on his passes, and as a result, it ends up in places where the defense could get their hands on him. Another example of great defense, you see Reeves cut McCollum off, and then he has to clear the handoff not once, not twice, not three times, but four times, and then he gets back and gives McCollum a hand to get the miss. That's great effort. If we're going to bash Westbrook at his lows, we've got to praise him at his highs. And in these past three games coming off the bench, he's played great. And what really stood out to me in this Pelicans game is how unforced and natural the game has been to Westbrook. And you can really see it in the way he's playing, like he's having fun. And if the Lakers want to compete, this is the Westbrook that you want to see. On this sideline out of bounds play, Lonnie Walker can't try to cheat all these screens by going over them. Instead, he has to chase McCollum, because this sets him up to be in a bad position when McCollum catches, because now McCollum can rip baseline to where there's no help, and McCollum gets the easy floater. On this drive by Murphy, Reed's job is to help to stop the drive, then get right back to his. But then he ended up doing the whole 360 and lost sight of his man, which allowed Alvarado to get a clean look from three. Good hands by Westbrook to get the steal and start the break. But what I want you to watch is this charge by Graham. This is a tricky play to make defensively because either you're going to guess right or you're going to guess wrong. And sometimes the ref may not be on your side to blow the whistle to give you this call. But if you're going to end up guessing, usually guess middle because that's where players like to counter towards. After getting this steal, Reeves has to do a better job of quickly pitching the ball ahead somewhere in LeBron's vicinity, because no one on the Pelicans would be able to catch up to him. But instead, he dribbles and misses out on a three-on-one. After switching on to Marshall off the split action, Reeves has to commit to stopping Zion on this roll, because Marshall's a non-shooter. You don't have to worry about him. So it's better that you stop Zion, who's rolling to the rim. All he needs to do is make one free throw. Just one free throw. And that'll help your odds of getting the number one pick this season because he got the Lakers pick. But I guess the pressure got to the rookie and they let Matt Ryan get a clean look from the corner and it was game over. For Wiseman to be 7 foot 240, you can't allow a guard this size to push you off your line. You've got to be stronger with your moves. Notice how Hampton closes out the pool with his hands high, which discourages that easy slip pass pool could have made and they get the turnover. Suggs also had this similar play with Steph having his hands active, ready for one to step through that pass. So although coaches may always tell you to have active hands, it's always a benefit. Week 3 Part 1 Smoke of the Week is brought to you by the one and only Andrew Wiggins. Ooh, so beautiful. Let's get a replay on that one. Oh, wow. Such a beautiful smoke. Entering this season, Suggs has really had a lot of confidence shooting the three, and he had a, plenty of it on this shot. But look how high that shot went. That would have been on his head had he missed it. But he made it, so... And it shows he's been putting in a lot of work this summer. But I also want you to watch how he makes his big-time defensive play on Steph and makes an X rotation back to Draymond to get the steal. 